تذكر انه فورا سكرت المكالمه ونهيتها خفت كثير بس بعدين بعد حوالي شي 10 دقائق قلت لا يعني هلا زوجي معتمد علي وبالفعل اتصلت وبالفعل اول سؤال سالوني اياه لايف اور ديث قلت لهم ايه لايف اور ديث أنا سلام عبد الصمد علي بلعام ليبية سورية صلي بالغربة فترة طويلة تحديدا ببريطانيا لندن من أكثر من 20 سنة زواجي من محمد كان كثير تقليدي أنا ما التقيت فيه إلا لما جيت لهون على بريطانيا كان أول لقاء لنا بالمطار هي أول مرة بشوفه هو قريبي طبعا من ناحية الأم يعني ابن خالي ووصلنا يعني وقت ما أجيت على لندن من يعني عشرين سنة صلنا متزوجين أحمد بيعني لي كتير خصوصا اللي يعني الزوج بالغربة كتير بيعني للمرأة هو مو بس زوجي هو يعني رفيق دربي بهالحياة يعني لا محمد بصراحة كثير كثير حنون، يمكن فرق العمر بيني وبينه كمان عطاه يعني صفة الأب وصفة الزوج، مع أولاده كثير كمان منيح، كثير متفهم، يمكن أكثر مني حتى، وخصوصا مع بنته يعني، مثل ما بيقولوا كل فتاة بأبيها معجبة. Me and my dad, we have a like a very strong relationship. Um, he's always like telling me stories, he's always taking me places and Um, yeah, I love him so much. I think I knew that he had like high blood pressure, like he had to take a lot of medication and yeah, that's like what was worrying me. فترة طويلة كان عنده ضغط مرتفع وما كنا نعرف وبعدين الضغط المرتفع سبب انه كان عنده ثلاث شرايين بالقلب مسكر واحنا ما كان عندنا علم يعني لاخر يعني مثل ما بيقولوا لاست مينت سوى عملية ب 2019 بشهر 10 ستنت او دعامات للقلب وكان اثنين منهم 95% كانوا مسكرين يعني We knew it was ill, we knew it was serious, but we felt that he will recover this. Because when it came to adversity, Safraz is the one you would have in your corner. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm Mr. Khar Qayyum, elder brother of uh, Safraz Qayyum. My late father, he was uh, one of the first uh, Pakistani families to settle in Warrington. Safraz was a um, very popular kid. Um, he was somewhat uh, mischievous. Um, he, he would always like to uh, laugh and a joke. My mother used to give him my milk bottle to give to me. He would take it from me and then hide somewhere and drink the milk himself. He had a contagious smile. If we were in a, a bad mood or in a serious situation, he would always Uh, turn that around and make you smile. So I think that's a, uh, I think most people you'll come across will actually say that. Well, what I would say is like, he's very unique in his own way. 
he would get along, have a laugh with his few people, he would joke around, which is overwhelming for me because I'm his son at the end of the day and what I see from dad, I was impressed about. Generally, his health was very good. And it was only recently, uh, back in November 2019, he went into hospital. So they did blood tests, ECG. He also uh, put him through the MRI scan. And the first thing he said when he got home, he rang everyone, he said, you guys, if you want to get an MOT, you would have to pay this, this, this. I've just come home with green light and I didn't have to pay a penny. And that was Safraz all over, you know. هلا اصابتي كيف بدات كانت كثير بسرعه يعني اللي بتذكر انه المدارس كان اخر يوم هو الخميس بمدارس الاولاد الحجر انا انا فقت يوم السبت كنت مريضه يعني انا فورا هيك الاحداث كلها تسارعت وكنت فورا حسيت انه بشعور بشعور مرض شو هو ما كنت اعرف بعد حوالي ثلاثة أيام بتذكر محمد عم يقول لي إنه الأكل اللي أنت طبختيها اليوم مضايقتني، أنا حاسس حالي مالي قدران. بعد حوالي ثلاثة أيام زادت الأعراض عند محمد زاد الصداع زاد الحرارة بدت معه الحرارة وأنا صار عندي حرارة حسيت إنه في في إنه يعني هوني بديت إنه أنا أعطي إشارات استفهام إنه هل إحنا مصابين؟ I started getting like thoughts like could it be the virus it was kind of sad thinking about it especially for my dad as I think like there's like problems with his heart so when like I saw all of that it kind of made me worried more about my parents and my siblings معانات محمد كانت واضحة واضحة ان هي اكثر من معاناتنا يعني محمد ما عتقام نهائيا خلال ملاحظتي كمان لمحمد انه حسيت اضافره وجلده بلش يصير لون داكن، انا هون اخذت القرار انه خلص بالفعل صار الوقت المناسب انه لازم اتصل خلال حوالي بعتقد 20 دقيقة كانوا موجودين. بتذكر يمكن قاسوا له حرارته وشافوا الاكسجين ليفل طلع ناقص قالوا لي يلبس مباشرة ولازم يمشي معنا And I just remember them taking the, him and putting him in the ambulance car and then drove off But it was really sad, yeah We heard uh, one of our families, uncle's families, they tested positive for COVID. So uh, he decided, right, okay, uh, let's go to Haydock. And uh, it was a day later that he realised uh, he tested positive. We certainly weren't um, frightened or fearful in any way, you know, at that time. You know, we took COVID seriously then, we take COVID seriously now. He 
he was actually coughing consistently and I was in my own room at that time, my dad was in our room. So he knocked on my door and basically said, don't come near me, just leave me alone and just bring the ambulance in. Well, so I just stayed in the stairs and just watch what's going to happen. I'm waiting for an update. Wednesday the 10th of June he went in because uh, he was feeling breathless. Which is probably within uh, four or five days of him being tested positive. The feeling at that time was, I was quietly upset because not only my dad, it was my mum, my sister, and it was just me and my brother at home, which was at that time, we, we couldn't do much either. Unless just hope that they come home soon. A few days later, he was in high dependency unit and they said to him, oh, right, you've done well today. If you carry on like this, we'll get you on a re rehabilitation and send you home. I've got his text here. They put me on CPAC last night on Saturday. Inshallah, it's looking positive, but long road to recovery. Temperature 40, way too high. Doctor's coming at 9 a.m. So this was Sunday morning now. And then I uh, text him 8 o'clock in the morning. Is the temperature is down yet? No, are you feeling better generally, but like an oven? And I said, oh, we need to get that temperature down. Breathing control is good. And I said, Inshallah, keep doing Zikr. Uh, you'll be okay. Saturday, Sunday, I think his progress was good. Sunday night, it went the other way when they put him on the CPAP machine. Uh, and then he didn't really recover from that. He didn't like the CPAP machine at all. I, th I think it's carbon uh, um, dioxide uh, levels in his body were increasing um, and his sats weren't reading too well. Uh, they made a quick decision, didn't even ask our permission. Uh, they put him in to induce coma. أخبار محمد كانت تجيني عن طريق رفيقتي أنا عطيتها برميشن أن تتصل بالمشفى كل يوم تتصل مرة أو اثنين يعطوها الأخبار أو الريبورت هيك لعند لعند يوم الخميس هي كان يعني النقطة الفاصلة كانت يعني لهالمرحلة هي كانت أصعب ثلاث أيام بحياتي خميس وجمعة وسبت طبعا كانت المكالمة بالليل بتذكر يوم الخميس قالوا لي إنه في تراجع كتير بحالة محمد وبكرة بنعطيك الأبديت إحساسي إنه النتيجة كانت إيجابية ما كان مفاجئ هلأ صار شعور تاني إنه يترى محمد حيتحسن مع كل هالأخبار اللي كنا عم نسمعها مع كل هالدث ريت اللي كان عم نشوفه بكل بكل مكان هذا بقى كان هذا القلق ال يعني او الشعور الثاني اجى يوم الجمعة وانا على احر من الجمر بيجيني اتصال انه للاسف الاكسجين محمد كثير كثير نازل عم يعطوه 16 لتر باليوم عم يعطوه والاكس راي تبع الرئة وضح انه اسوء مما دخل للمشفى انهرت بكل معنى الكلمة 
ما عرفت شو اعمل ابكي اصرخ كنت بحاجه لكل شخص يكون جنبي بحاجه لامي بحاجه لاخواتي So she told me what happened and yeah we were just very upset but then we were just like making dua praying ما بعرف يعني ما بقدر اوصف شعوري ابدا ابدا وخصوصا قالوا لي انه من هون ليوم السبت اذا ما تحسنت حالته لانه في تراجع كثير قوي انه ممكن يحطوه بغيبوبه اصطناعيه وقالوا لي صار عنده نقص بالذاكره سالوه قالوا له وين انت عن اليوم وعن المكان اللي قاعد فيه عن اسمه ما عرف يجاوبون هي شو بقول لك الشعره التي قصبت ظهر البعير يعني When we heard first heard of induced coma, our hearts sank a little bit, but we were so positive. We, we, we thought, you know, we've got a fighter there. So at that time, I always kept bringing positive that I'll do dua, I'll do much as possible, that he will recover and come home soon. He started encountering problems with his other organs, namely his kidney. So that really got us thinking, you know, that, you know, this is not getting any better. We were prepared uh, by the doctors that he's very, very ill, you know, seriously ill. If, if it's our time, it's our time, we accept that. But the heart-wrenching circumstances around this one was that we couldn't go and see him. We weren't there. And he must have been quite uh, alone. What I mostly miss about him is the way he was, the way he brought a smile to me, the way how he treated me. I'll do anything to cherish a moment with him, even if it's a hug or anything, a laugh or anything. Just not with him, just a family whole as a together. Because I just feel ever since he's gone, there's just this piece of gone missing. Like, for example, I'll give you on Eid day, it just felt so ever, like, quiet. I've never felt this way before. But whatever's written is written. I, I lost one dollar. I just had to take him. I just have to leave it to that now. Don't move on. And inshallah, I have sober, I keep faith for more. My dad and my family. He used to listen to this all the time, um, weeks and months before he was admitted to hospital. It became his favourite, like it was like his background score. Whenever breakfast, lunch, dinner, his wife would say he would have this on, his, uh, on the TV. That's him. يوم الجمعة الفجر بالذكار قالت لي سلام في بشارة كتير حلوة 
ربك استجاب قلت لي الحمد لله محمد نزلوا له الاكسجين يوم الخميس بيجيني اتصال انه في احتمال محمد يطلع يعني وض بحالك طبعا من كثر ما كنت فرحانه فرحانه ما عرفت شو اعمل كنت عم دور بالبيت انه شو بدي اعمل شو بدي اساوي يعني صلوا طالع من صلوا فترة طويلة طالع من البيت انه كيف بدي استقبله كيف بدي اشوفه شو بدي اعمل طبعا هذه التجربة يعني تجربة عميقة ومستحيل انه انساها يعني دائما حتبقى في بالي مثل الجرح الغميق يعني لما بيضرب الجسم ممكن الواحد يتعافى لكن بيبقى اثر وهذا الاثر بيضل حتى اخر يوم في حياته الواحد صحة الإنسان عائلة الإنسان هي نعمة كبيرة جدا فلما الواحد يعني رجع كأنه رجع إلى الحياة الحياة ما بتمشي بلا محمد وهالبيت صعب يمشي من غيره يعني الحمد لله الحمد لله أنه رجع لي إياه بالسلامة وهو بكامل صحته الحمد لله